Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lazarus is dead. This is how we would normally describe someone whose life has ended, whose body was buried, sealed up in a tomb, concealed by a stone, rotting in the darkness, and starting to stink. But Lazarus is dead is not how Christ speaks. Instead, Christ says, Lazarus is sleeping. Why? Because while death for us is a very final sort of thing, for Christ, the immortal Son of God, death is but a sleep, a sleep from which the faithful will rise. This Christ's disciples failed to grasp. Lazarus was only sleeping, because sooner rather than later, Lazarus would get up. He would get up because Christ would raise him. He would get up because Christ is the resurrection and the life, and the one who believes in him shall never die. And this is the point for today. When you have Christ, you not only have the resurrection and the life in the future, you have the resurrection and the life right now as your own present possession. And that means that those who have Christ in faith die but only sleep. They sleep in the sure and certain hope of getting up again. Eternal life is yours already in Christ. And our Lord wants everyone to believe this. And so in our text, he takes an opportunity. The opportunity that the death of Lazarus might show the world that Christ is the resurrection and the life. We're told that Lazarus' death is for the glory of God. Surely it stung, it hurt Martha and Mary. But the point was not to injure, the point was not to sadden. The point was the glory of God. Now when Christ hears the news about Lazarus' illness, he stays put in Bethany for two days. There's no mistaking that Lazarus is dead. Jesus knows this. He doesn't get up. He doesn't rush to the bedside because he knows that Lazarus is dead. And Christ allowed Lazarus to die that all might see the glory of God, and especially that all might believe. He delays for the sake of his disciples and for the sake of you, that you might believe. But this journey is not without danger. For the last time that Christ was in Judea, the Jews sought to stone him. And one can almost sense a kind of smile, a, a smirk on the face of Christ when he says, Let us go to him. For even if the road leads them into dangers, the disciples should stay close to the Lord. For he is the light without which the one stumbles in darkness. And the irony was not lost on me. In fact, I love the fact that it is Thomas, doubting Thomas, who persuades the other disciples, let us go also, that we may die with him. Now Christ gets to Bethany, and Martha approaches him. 
And this is an occasion for Christ to call Martha to faith. Let us ask then, where was Martha's mind? Martha was stuck in the trauma of the past. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But Martha's mind was also on the hope of the future. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. But where was Martha? She was anywhere but right there. Anywhere but the present. One foot looking in the past. One foot looking in the future. But she wanted nothing to do with the now. But Christ takes Martha out of the past and out of the future and brings her to himself there, right before her. I am the resurrection and the life. Martha's confession to him. I know that he will rise again the resurrection of the last day, and that she says, you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Jesus does not contradict these things, but he adds to it. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? To believe in Him is to live forever and not die. To believe in Him is to have the resurrection as your own present possession. And to believe in Him at the day of death is merely to fall asleep in the hope of waking up again. Do you believe this? Christ asked. And that wonderful confession escapes her lips. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into this world. Now Lazarus' death and rising points for us to Easter Sunday, to Christ's own death and resurrection, and to your resurrection on the last day. This fifth Sunday in Lent is a sort of dress rehearsal, if you will, for Holy Week, preparing you for the passion, for the death, and for the resurrection of our Lord Christ Jesus. And here also is the shortest verse in Holy Scripture. John 11, verse 35. Jesus wept. To the ancient Greek mind, to the Stoic mind of that day, a very fundamental characteristic of God was apathia. Apathy. The total inability to feel any emotion whatsoever. God was for them to be totally isolated, passionless, unmoved. And there are even some Christians who argue that God is not moved by emotion, by the pains and the sufferings of Christians, because they mistakenly see in this that the changeless God, He who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, is somehow changed. But this is not so. Christ Jesus is passionate, as is our Father and the Holy Spirit. And Christ Jesus is a passionate enemy of death. He was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. The word that the Greeks use that's in the original text is, describes the snorting sound that a horse makes, a total disgust with the situation. <sighs> He's moved and troubled at the sight of Mary weeping. He's angry. 
And the resurrection of Lazarus serves then as a warning. Death, I'm coming for you. And that is why our Lord dies. That is why he takes our sin upon himself. So that by his death, he might destroy the one who has the power of death. Since, therefore, the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver all who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. So writes St. Paul in his letter to the Hebrews, Death has no more power over Christ. He has the last word. And eternal life he gives to you. It is yours through faith in Christ and in his work for you. In the words of the small catechism, on the last day he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. And this is your share as well. For just as Christ called Lazarus forth from the grave, who who would sleep in the dust, we who would sleep in the dust of death, we shall one day hear the Lord's voice. Come out. Brothers and sisters, to believe in Christ Jesus is to have his resurrection and life right now. And our Lord allowed Lazarus to die so that he could teach this to the whole world. And may the Holy Spirit, who comes through the word preached and proclaimed, teach you this so that you too may believe and have life eternal in his name. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.